Coming up today on Studio 13 Live, we are talking about all the incredible things Tacoma has to offer. We're getting a look at the LeMay Car Museum's all-new Porsche exhibit and preparing to feed the polar bears at the Point Defiant Zoo. And we'll check out all the cool spots downtown, including McMiniman. Plus, we'll break down the top five things you might not know about Tacoma with Pretty Gritty Tours. Studio 13 Live from Tacoma starts right now. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around, like sun shining through the clouds. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make your day. Hello! Hello. Tacoma. It is a summer fun tour, baby. Yes, I'm Maria Garcia. I'm Carly Henderson. So excited <laughs> to be here. So you might be wondering where we are right now. Mm -hmm. We are on the deck at Ferrelli's Pizza. How about this view? Look at that. It's amazing. So they were founded in 1995. They've also got 12 locations across the Puget Sound. And you're going to be making a pizza in a little I bit. I am. I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm going to try their award-winning pizza. And you know, actually, uh, we both have been in this area before. We yeah. love it here. It's beautiful. Yeah, I heard you went for a nice walk this morning. <laughs> I did. I showed up a little bit early unexpectedly, and yeah, it yeah. was really fun. Yeah, I've also enjoyed a walk through Swan Creek Park, but great waterfront property. So much to do here. We're going to be showing it all to you today. Um, right now, we're going to check in with our friend Brian McMillan. I hear he's over at Incline Cider checking out some drinks. I sure am. This is Jordan right here. This is Leslie right here. And uh, let's talk about Incline Cider Company. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, well, this is our home base here in Tacoma. We're a family-owned cider company. Um, Jordan and I are husband and wife, and Jordan and his dad started Incline. Um, this is our place here in town where we can really showcase our ciders and give someone a full tasting experience around cider, and that's why we opened up. It is a really cool space. Got, got some arcade stuff going on over there and, and, and a bunch of high tops as well. Uh, what are we going to be trying today, Jordan? Uh, we got some of our uh, favorite ciders, some of our most popular ciders here at the Tap Room. Um, we have our Marionberry Cider, uh, followed by our White Peach. Okay. Uh, probably our most popular, which is our Imperial Hazy Honey Crisp, um, followed by the uh, Imperial Tart Cherry. I love Marionberry everything. I love Marionberry pie. I love Marionberry, you know, jam, whatever. So I, I, I requested this. He's like, oh, no, don't worry. I got you. So cheers. Cheers. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. Second cider we ever came out with. What's that? That's the second cider we ever came oh. out with. Yep. That is so good. That is really, really good. Uh, how did you come up with the name Incline? Uh, kind of a, a funny family story, but uh, my my dad, uh, when we started the business and we're talking about it, he was actually living in Incline Village, uh, Lake Tahoe. And uh, as we were kind of mulling over, you know, ideas and names, um, that was one that just kind of stuck. And I think it like fit with our ethos and vibe of just, uh, we like the outdoors, we like camping, we like adventuring, hiking, biking. Uh, kind of all things outside and incline was kind of um, you know it, it can mean anything or nothing uh, and so we didn't want to be too tied to a specific place uh, but incline really just fit the vibe and, and really stuck I, I love it what is the second one we're going to try here what is this that is the uh, the white peach okay the white peach all right I'll give this a shot and while, while I'm trying this you guys are going to be a part of some festivals coming up yeah absolutely uh, the Seattle Cider Summit that's probably the biggest cider festival in Washington and that's happening September 8th and September 9th Friday Saturday um, in Lake, Le Lake Union at the park over there Okay, now I know uh, the process of making cider, how, how different is it than making beer? Because, you know, I, I know, uh, you know, the beer scene has been around for, for quite some time. Sure. The cider scene has really come on strong in the past five to ten years. Yeah. So what's the process like? You know, uh, making cider is very similar to making wine. So uh, there are some similarities in beer. They both, of course, go through a fermentation process. Uh, but with cider, you start with a, uh, a, a nice fruit juice uh, and ferment that down. So just as you would make wine and crush grapes and get grape juice and ferment that into wine, uh, cider is essentially the same process of taking apples, crushing that, getting juice, fermenting that into a, a hard cider. And how do you come up with the recipe? I mean, this is there's a lot of creative stuff behind me here. I mean, if you take a look, you guys have quite a large selection like how do you come up with this stuff 
Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest, a lot of it takes place at the, uh, the the kitchen counter of just throwing ideas around and trying different things and just being willing to to step outside the box. And, and you have and, to probably be willing to fail too, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There's a lot more things that, that don't end up on the menu than, than do, um, but that's all, all part of the fun too. Now, one of, one of the final things uh, is the, that we're going to be trying is the tart cherry. Yep. So how'd you come up with this one? Um, tart cherry, just there's not a lot of cherry stuff out there in the sense of uh, just that like nice, authentic, rich, bright cherry. So we use dark sweet cherry juice in there, sour tart cherry juice. It's just nice, rich, authentic cherry up front. Uh, has a nice tartness to it, so it's really balanced. Um, yeah, just really fun for fall as we come into the, the, the colder season as summer's about to come to a close. Guys, they're all good. They're really all good. Yeah, they're very good. How, how can people find you? Uh, you know, we're do a little search, Incline Cider House. We're here in downtown Tacoma. Um, Instagram at Incline Cider House or at Incline Cider. Perfect. Uh, yep. That's, All right. Yeah. Well, thanks. You, thanks so much, yeah, you guys. Uh, Carly and Berea. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Tr I, my Mary and Barry one. I mean, here. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we'll send it back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Clink. Thank you. Those <laughs> ciders look delicious. They really and do. Cherry, sign me yep. up. Um, we'll be checking back in with BMAC a little bit later in the show. Now, uh, through our Emerald Eat segment, we get to handle some really interesting food, but things went a little differently for you here recently. Yeah, you know, I came down to Tacoma a little early. I headed to Point Defiant Zoo, and I got to pre prepare food for another animal, a polar bear. Check it out. <laughs> Hey friends, I am here at Point Defiant Zoo in Tacoma for the very first time and I'm so excited because we are here to learn all about some twin polar bear sisters. Right now I'm here with my new friend Sheridan. You are a zookeeper here. Everybody's dream job, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, I get that question or I get that statement a lot. A lot of people wanted to do this when they were eight or 10 and so it's really fun to be able to do it now. Amazing, tell me all about these polar bear sisters. Where do they come from? What's their story? So they came from the Detroit Zoo. They were both born there to the same mom and a day or two into the birth or um, afterwards, uh, Lerica was having some problems and her staff rushed in there and got her out of there. She wasn't nursing and just not acting as a polar bear cub should. Mm -hmm. And so veterinarians tended to her and when they went to place her back, mom ended up rejecting her. So then it was up to her keepers to care for her for the next two and a half years because polar bear cubs need to stay with their moms for two and a half, sometimes three years. Mm -hmm. So Astra stayed with mom and Lerica went with her keepers. How did they end up here? They they came here just a few months ago, and actually they had to be reintroduced to each other before they came here. The so sisters? The sisters oh. did because they had different parents caring for them. So they were reintroduced, and then we actually had staff fly down to Detroit, or up to Detroit actually, and uh, we got to know the girls before they came here. So we got to know them in their environment with their keepers and what they're like before we brought them here. Uh, at the beginning of June. And so they're new to us, but they're also new to each other. Uh, they're getting to know the space and us just while they're getting to know each other as well. What do polar bears eat? They eat a lot of food. So the girls are eating seven to nine pounds of food a day right now, and they're getting raw meat and fish. Uh, they're also getting a lot of fat because that's what polar bears would eat out in the uh, out in the wild. So mm -hmm. we want to give them what they would eat there. And then uh, they also really enjoy produce. So we're giving them produce uh, just because they like it, but that's not a huge portion of their actual base diet. Okay, cool. Can I help you prepare some food you for the polar bear? You sure can. So we're gonna go into fish prep over here okay. and get our hands dirty. Let's do it. <laughs> of the diet prep in the morning. Um, so you're gonna help me with our bear diets. Now I've already weighed out the meat and fat so we can look at that if you wanna see that. But I always need help with the fish. Okay. So first, um, I just need you to put probably just one glove on there. And right. if you need to, go ahead and put two. But I'll go with two. Okay, you know? great. You just put uh, yeah, whatever <laughs> on there and then we'll kind of dig into the fish. They're very tight. There you go. Sounds good. You got it. I just, I was, I was struck by this little friend. <laughs> yes, know, right this here. is their salmon. And the girls aren't really accustomed to eating it yet and we don't have to do anything with this it's actually fine to give as is wow. um, it's frozen and it makes for a really nice popsicle on super hot days like today so this is the fish that we give them uh, this is herring and anything that's not a herring like this is a sardine we don't want this in here so we're gonna throw that away later um, but we want herring right now I have Astra's uh, bucket on the scale and so what we need to give her is a pound of herring so I need you to give her a pound of nice herring 
And if you see any gross herring, broken bodies, missing eyeballs, oh. we're gonna try and throw that out. Oh. And you have a squid in there. Oh. <laughs> it's going really well. I'm trying to play this cool, y'all. <laughs> so here, I'll just my bury the squid. Out. Oh my gosh. You're almost a two pounds. Uh, as a vegetarian, this is a very interesting task. <laughs> All right. It's the animal kingdom, you know? So how much do the polar bears weigh? Uh, right now, Lerica is weighing 330 pounds, okay. and Astra is weighing 630. So there's quite a difference in oh. weight between the two, and yeah. quite a difference in diet and how much they eat. So in nature, the polar bears typically will eat a lot like during the summers and then take the winters to kind of chill. Do you guys follow the similar like feeding schedule here or yes. how does it work? Yes, that's a great question and you're almost at your one pound. So oh, you okay. Stop there. But the, the girls are a little bit young uh, to exhibit the normal pattern of a polar bear uh, eating here. But yeah, in the past with our bears, we have seen that nice um, curve where in the springtime they're eating tons and tons of seals out in the Arctic because yeah. they're just easy catch for our seal pups. And here we see that same spike of we're so hungry. Yeah. And so we'll feed them and that normally lasts through uh, the end of summer right around August. Oh, hello. Just preparing some food in yeah. here. <laughs> People are coming to see. <laughs> Cut up uh, like half of this cantaloupe. I would love to. And, um, and they can eat the rind and the seeds and everything. You said half? So, yeah, you can just, just cut it in half, half and then okay. um, and then go from there. <laughs> there we go. It's been a minute since I've cut a cantaloupe. All right. There you go. Oh, so they just go yeah, they'll full just on eat in. The whole thing. Wow. Yeah. If That's we need cool. to do training, we'll cut it into smaller pieces. Polar bears are an endangered species, right? Yes. So what can we all do to help the polar bears? Um, one thing that we can do is not be afraid to talk about things like climate change. We need to make it a more normal conversation with our friends and family because together we can uh, really put our heads together and come up with some ideas for uh, renewable energy options. And if people want to come to your friends Astra and Lerica, what is the best time that they can see them in action? Uh, they're normally up in action around 11.30. We have a keeper talk and we make a pretty good effort to get them viewable uh, in that space. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much, Sharon. Yeah, thanks for your help today. Yeah, thanks for everything you do, and this is so cool. Learning about polar bears. <laughs> I gotta go wash my hands. That's fine. <laughs> what a cool experience. I loved heading down there, and it was awesome to kind of learn about how the twin sisters' relationship mm -hmm. is just blossoming now because, you know, one was raised by humans, so she had to learn how to be more like a polar bear from her sister. Okay, how does one learn to do that? Yeah, so to be more like a polar bear, you're going to want to destroy more things, bite toys, just generally bang things around. You know, life of a polar bear. Is my son a polar bear? I, I think he might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just fantastic, Thank Carly. You. So fun to watch and you know we're gonna head to break but before we do I want to tell you we're gonna check back in with Brian Macmillan who's at the LeMay Car Museum checking out some Porsches. Yes, Very right nice. after the break. I want to see you smile. I want to see you smile. We are here down in Tacoma checking out all the amazing things you can do around town. We've got, uh, we're just hanging out here at Corelli's Pizza, having a good time. A little bit of a classic Pacific Northwest weather day behind yeah. us right now. But that's not going to stop us from having the best day ever. It never does, girl. Yeah. You know, on the drive over here, there's no way that you didn't see it. The LeMay Car Museum. Mm -hmm. Not only is it beautiful on the outside, but I hear they got some very cool stuff inside, too. Yeah, so we're going to kick it over to our friend Brian McMillan, who's checking out their new Porsche exhibit. Now, when you're driving down I-5 and you look over uh, past the Tacoma Dome, you'll see a car museum right next to it. And that's where I'm standing right now. This is much bigger than I expected. This is Jake Weld, and this is a remarkable place. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot bigger than it looks from the freeway. Uh -huh. um, four floors total, over 165,000 square feet. Um, there's over 300 vehicles in the museum, so we're just scratching the surface up here from the top. This is really special vehicles as well, and I want to show you a couple of really cool things that really stood out to us as we walked in here. This is a 1906 Ford. This this vehicle uh, was produced 100, was that, almost 120 years ago. Yep, yeah, very early on, kind of right on, on the threshold there of um, when the assembly line was created. 
So you're looking at something that was the very early stages of Ford as a motor company. It's really cool that you guys have this. This, this uh, car is something really special as well, 1932 Ford. You were telling me that this actually has a special engine in it. It does. This, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, 1932 Ford. It has a Boeing jet engine in it, the first, <laughs> first car with an airplane engine in it ever created. Um, right here in our own backyard in Seattle, so very special. I bet that goes pretty fast for its time, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> and you guys don't only have the older cars, but you have some newer cars as well. And you also have a very special exhibit going on right now, too, with Porsche. We do. Yeah, this is, um, as we're entering here, our um, Porsche exhibit in this part of the gallery. This is 75 years of Porsche that we're celebrating. Um, it is their 75th anniversary. Um, as an automotive manufacturer this year. So, um, you know, this exhibit kind of has everything in it from, you know, the very beginning eight, uh, stages of their, of their company producing cars all the way up to this year in 2023 and kind of everything in between. So there's a lot to offer in this exhibit. It's really exciting. So what else uh, can people see on the other floors here that we're not able to access right now? Yeah, so the rest of the collection below um, is really made up of our, our permanent collection in the museum, which um, we mentioned Harold LeMay. Um, some of the vehicles from downstairs started from his collection, um, and we've kind of obtained through donations and other things like that over time, other vehicles as well. So it's a mixture, but there are other exhibits down there. We have a really cool um, British collection. We have um, a NASCAR collection. Uh, Route 66, which kind of pays homage to, you know, the vehicles that drove Route 66. Um, so a lot of other things to offer outside of just this top floor, for sure. If you are even remotely into vehicles and cars and the history of cars, I mean, this this is a spectacular place. How can people uh, find you and come down here and, and uh, check it all out? Yeah, um, online, americascarmuseum.org. We're open 10 to 5, um, Thursday through Monday. Um, we are on social media. And um, so, yeah, come on down. As you mentioned, right next to the Comodome, we're here. All right. Well, uh, check it out. There's so many cool uh, other cars to check out here at the museum. Uh, we'll send it back to you guys. Those look like real life Hot Wheels. They kind of do. So cool. <laughs> that was awesome. I want to go pop over there after this. Um, don't go anywhere because we have so much coming up on Studio 13 Live. After the break, we're going to check in with our friend Chris from Pretty Gritty Tours to find out about some things you might not know about Tacoma right after this. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around. I want to see you smile. Take Look at that view. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful view. We are live from Tacoma today for our summer fun tour. And we have a very special guest with us. We do. The fun does not stop, my <laughs> friends. We're here with our friend Chris Stoddinger from Pretty Gritty Tours. Pleasure to be back. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's good to have you. Last time you were on set with us at Studio 13 Live, and now we came to you here in Tacoma. You really didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. I know. I'm excited. So you're going to be telling us five things we might not know about Tacoma, starting with the Northern Pacific Railroad. I think a lot of people forget the fact that Tacoma was the terminus for the Northern Pacific Railroad. So if you were going to cross the country for the first time ever without getting dysentery, this is where you would arrive. <laughs> you would want that, yeah. Yeah, number one, number one death on the Oregon Trail. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least in the Very game cool. when I played. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. That is super cool. I had no idea. So yeah, so when the train arrived here, we had wanted something spectacular for it. So Union Station downtown, now our federal courthouse, that was the train station where you would arrive and depart. And so it's this luxury facility that was done by the same guys who actually did Grand Central Terminal in New York. Oh, wow. So kind of like a bookend to the country right there. Nice. Do you feel like it resembles uh, Grand Central? I, I think it does. Once yeah. you like, there's just more Chihuly in ours. Yeah. So no yeah. big deal. Bonus. Very nice. <laughs> Hello. That's a flex, baby. Okay. So uh, you have another one for us here. The guy who inspired around the world in 80 days uh, has history here. Well, since we're talking about trains, yeah. we got to bring up George Francis train. This is the eccentric billionaire oh, oh. who inspired around the world in 80 days. He did that trip around the world three different times. And the first time he got arrested a lot, because again, sure. uh, eccentric, but he was a huge like Tacoma booster. And so when he wanted to break his own record, he launched and then arrived back here in Tacoma. And oh, I, so he did it in, I believe, 67 days, 12 hours and one minute. Wow. Nice. There you go. Which Very for the 1800s, that's a big, like, you can't get <laughs> airport great. security in that time uh, right now. 
Oh. Yeah, I still don't have TSA free check, so it, it feels How do you like live? <laughs> Yeah, I, I would like that job title though. <laughs> Eccentric millionaire, billionaire? billionaire. Yeah, billionaire. Yeah. Even better. So. I mean, <laughs> gotta just aim a little higher. I know. You know, Chris, I'm sure you go to shows at the Tacoma Dome all the time. Mm -hmm. I still have not checked one out, but oh, give us a no. scoop on it. The Tacoma Dome is, of course, the greatest amphitheater in the area, yep. uh, but it is the second largest wooden dome in the country. And I gotta give some caveats on that. Okay. Technically, the Superior Dome in Michigan is six feet wider in diameter. <sighs> The Tacoma Dome holds about 13,000 more people and is 12 feet higher, so you can decide for yourself. <laughs> but, uh, not only does it host everything from Monster Jam to our first act being David Bowie, mm. but it's entirely made out of this old growth dug fir that they reclaimed after the explosion of Mount St. Helens. Oh, that's So when cool. the mountain exploded, they just went out and reclaimed all the trees and built the Tacoma Dome. So you guys have Climate Pledge, we have Climate Recycle Arena. Oh, <laughs> very like nice. Good for the environment, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so this is pretty interesting though. So uh, Tacoma actually helped out in World War II? It's true. So we are very good with trees. I don't know if there's yes, a theme here. Yes. Yeah. But uh, Tacoma very early on was a shipbuilding community. We made a lot of the like commercial wood building or wooden built ship to go around doing fishing of all varieties. Mm -hmm. And then in World War II, the Navy tapped us to start creating wooden mine sweepers. Because so many of these naval mines are triggered by magnetic devices. So they're like, just build your ships out of wood. Good job, wow. Tacoma. Wow. Nice. So, okay. No big deal. No big deal. Push that shoulder off right there. You know, my brother has been obsessed with reading the Dune books. And yes. I hear that the author is actually from Tacoma. So this is true. Frank Herbert came of age, like, just down the street from where we are right yeah. now. Oh, nice. And I think a lot of people just associate his time as a journalist, seeing the sand dunes in Oregon, that he was like, I'll create the greatest sci-fi novels ever. Mm -hmm. But in fact, he based a lot of that world building on his time growing up in Tacoma. And in fact, where we are right now used to be the old Asarco smelting plant, and that informed a lot of his like geopolitical corruption that he built into Dune. <laughs> oh, that's Timothy Chalamet cool. came later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very cool. So if people want to find you, uh, they're so you know they lo they're loving what you're telling them. Where can they get more from you? PrettyGrittyTours.com or all over the internet. It's all just Pretty Gritty Tours. There's cool. just the one of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and an excellent TikTok follow. I have to say. I mean, yeah. like I don't want to brag, but a pretty good. You're kind of doing a big what deal. we can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today. It's always you make learning fun. Well, yeah, I that's do what talent. I can. And you that's make sharing it more fun. So oh, thanks. good. Oh, good. good. We love again. that. Done. All right. When we come back, we're going to visit Southern Kitchen where you can get an excellent meal and a history lesson, that too. That sounds good to me. We're also going to be uh, sending Brian McMillan over to the Washington State History Museum. Stick with us right after the break. I want to see you smile. Take you another mile. Don't got to wait. Don't got to wait. Don't. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Welcome back. Look at those gorgeous shots over Tacoma. Not that we need to make it shine any brighter than it already does, but wow. How it's about beautiful. that? It's beautiful. It is. <laughs> We're having the best time bringing the show to you from Tacoma all day long today. I feel like we've already done so much. We've learned so much. Yeah, but there is still more to learn and more to eat. In fact, uh, we're going to visit with Southern Kitchen where not only could you have some delicious food, but a very interesting and unique history lesson too. Here's Michael Driver. It don't matter if you're black, white, green, or chocolate. If the food is good, how are you? The people will be here. Oh, good, good, good. These people can do some switching in the kitchen. It's like Southern Kitchen is a meeting ground. So great seeing you guys. For black leadership and togetherness of a community as a whole. We ready to get it rocking? When you think of Tacoma, you think of Southern Kitchen. They're synonymous. But let me tell you something. If you don't know your history, a man without a knowledge of himself is like a tree without any root. Without the knowledge of where you've been, you don't know where you're going. I have a passion for history. Pictures here of the Tuskegee Airmen, which I love. We are stepping up and into a little bit of Miss Gloria's mind, beautiful mind, and look how beautiful it is. My father's right there. My father was a chef in the U.S. Army and Navy. If you look around, it's a museum. It's a museum. All the different pictures, the colors, the lights, the people, it's phenomenal. You see the guy right here? 
those are Native Americans. We all have to remember that this was their land. They contributed a lot. I feel like um, like there's a, kind of like a renaissance going on here. This is my passion. My passion is his history. The Negro baseball leagues up there. It's literally everywhere you're looking in every direction, there's some kind of history, there's some kind of lesson. Each table has something black, black, about black history. And here again, this is something I want people to understand and know. They were all part of this country. And in order for us to get along, we have to know each other. That sounds like a plan. What you got to understand is that woman goes over there and hire all kinds of people. Black, white, green, chocolate, porcupine, all kinds of people. I work at a great place and I don't feel discriminated against, you know? That's our goal is just to make everybody feel welcome. Bam! When you feel that you can be yourself, beauty happens. And just the kindness and love that you're gonna get as a staff member, as a customer, as just a stranger coming through that doors, you're gonna feel that from her instantly. Sir, a pleasure. That's why this place flourishes, that's why it continues to progress, is because it is what it is. It's unapologetically Tacoma. It's unapologetically Miss Gloria. Thank you, my dear. Okay. I'll tell you, life gets no sweeter than this. I'm gonna tell my wife, mm -hmm. I've been to the mountaintop. You don't know what you've been missing until you've been to Southern Kitchen. Oh, how about that? Just a really unique way to learn about parts of our history and some delicious food. I mean, put some food on history. <laughs> we'll be talking history a lot more. <laughs> I love it. Um, right now, I want to, you know, keep the history lesson going. We're going to check in with our friend Brian McMillan at the Washington State History Museum. Brian, what you got for us? We're at the Washington State History Museum where they are currently showcasing some contemporary Native American art. I want to bring in Maggie Weatherby. You are the, the curator. Is I am the, the head of collections. Head of collections. Is that the same kind of thing or is that two different things? A curator and a, and a head of collections. I am in charge of all of the artifacts. Perfect. And, or the archive and, and uh, everything that, in the, everything you see in the building. That's fantastic. Very cool. Well, mm -hmm. uh, what are we looking at right now here? This is some pretty cool stuff. Thank you. This is our In the Spirit contemporary Native American art uh, exhibit. It's the 18th year that we have done it and it is something we, it's a jury show that we do every year with both Washington State um, Native American artists and, and artists uh, from across the nation. People submit them, they're they also voted on as well, right? And, so, and some of these have won best in show. Yes. Very neat. Uh, can, can we show off some of, the, some of the stuff in the cases? We totally can. We have some really wonderful pieces here. Um, our Honoring Innovation Award winner is Alison Bremner's Millennium Dreams, which is, which is this beautifully beaded beanie baby. Um, her, her story about this piece is a really powerful one about um, cultural objects being taken into museums. And uh, we also have purchased this piece for our permanent collection. So we're re really excited to be adding this very contemporary piece of art into our collection. Very, very neat. And mm -hmm. this right here uh, also uh, one. Uh, yeah, so this is our People's Choice Award winner. Um, these are dresses that were designed Designs, um, of course, when you see red in um, native art, it is usually because it is uh, for our sisters. This is what this one is, is titled, and it's all about um, honoring and remembering our missing and murdered indigenous sisters. Okay, and, and, and back over here, I mean, this is a pretty big exhibit here for us. Uh, what else do we have to see over here? We've got lots to see over here. Um, our Spirit of the Northwest award winner is here. Um, this is a Timothy O'Connell piece. And if you look closely, you can see there are designs painted within the painting. Oh, yeah, very cool. Uh, it's a very powerful piece. i um, really happy that Timothy submitted that this year. So we have very traditional pieces like this and also very contemporary um, pieces like the one behind you. Um, we have the... Um, very bright and colorful works, all the way over to Dan Friday's amazing glass works that are um, right over here next to us. And then over to Carly Federson's pieces. Um, Carly is from the Colville Confederated Tribes and best in show is Coyote uh, and the Monster Who Ate Everyone. And you can see in her basket, it's very contemporary. Coyote is holding a laptop. 
And in the piece next to it, there is a wonderful, wonderful series of clouds that you might recognize from Super Mario Brothers. So oh, exhibits yeah, like that. these are really great because it's both very contemporary and very traditional, depending on what the artist chooses and, to submit. A nice mix. And, and you guys have a, a huge space here. There's so much to see, right? There How is. do people come down and, and check out the museum? Come down to downtown Tacoma and check out the museum. Um, every third Thursday from 3 onward, we are free to the public. Um, and we're just really happy to have you down. We also do research appointments in our archive and just, you name it, we do it. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for coming. Definitely come down and check this out. There's so much to see. Carly and Marie, I'll send it back to you. Oh my gosh, that was, that so, was so, cool. so fun. I feel like when we hit the road for these shows, the whole time, wherever he goes, I'm just making a list of all the spots that I want to go back to. Absolutely, so very I'm sure you're cool. Taking notes too. I hope so. <laughs> Everybody make a list, yeah. a Carly list. That's yeah. what I call my list. <laughs> hey, coming up next, I'm going to be having a taste of some delicious pizza and cocktails coming up here at Ferrelli's Pizza. Heck yeah. We're also going to send Brian McMillan over to McMinimans. He's going to be you know, looking for the secret bar. Will yeah. he find it? Let's find out right after the break. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around. I wanna see you smile, take you another Hi friends, welcome back. We are just having the best day checking out all the amazing things that you can do around Tacoma. I feel like we've had a pretty big day already. And we're just going to keep the fun going. And you might notice I'm solo right now. My co-host is gone. That's because Maria went downstairs at Ferrelli's Pizza and she's getting in on making some food. What you got going on, Maria? Hey, girl, they said I could have some pizza and I said, say less, okay? <laughs> yes, we're here at Ferrelli's Pizza at Point Rustin. And, you know, I'm joined by Autumn and by Mike today. We're talking food, we're talking drinks, but we're gonna start with the pizza because that's what the spot is known for. So tell me about what we have here. We have right here our Northwest traditional pizza that was an award-winning pizza at the Expo in Las Vegas. This pizza features a really proofed crust with a roasted garlic and roasted carrot tomato sauce. It's got a crisp and curl sausage, a house-made fennel, um, and it's finished with a honey cream cheese drizzle, some chili flakes, and freshly grated Parmesan cheese. So it should be sweet, salty, savory, nice crunch from the dough, and our guests and our team are sure proud of it and love it. Oh my gosh, and I am honored to get to try it. I yeah. can try it, right, because oh, yeah. I'm already doing it? <laughs> yeah, help okay. yourself. That is fabulous. You listed all the things I love mm -hmm. here. So. Uh, while I'm trying it, and it's going to be delicious, congratulations too. You're Thank celebrating you. a special anniversary here. Yeah, I'm here. celebrating 25 years with Ferrelli's Pizza this year. Wild. Yep. And tell me about when you very first started. I very first started as a dishwasher when we had our single unit in Lacey, Washington. And I um, grew through our systems, um, ran kitchens, made pizza, and uh, you know, as we started growing as a company, started opening restaurants, and just been along for the great ride. And it's been fun. We just recently opened two new locations. Yeah. One in Hawks Prairie and one in Tumwater. So come check us out. So good. You already know that this is good, right? It's so delicious. Good. Okay, and we got one more thing right yeah. here. We've got some burrata. Tell me about this. Yeah, so the burrata, this is a new addition to our menu. And what we wanted to do was kind of elevate um, some appetizers. So we have um, a really good burrata ball that's got um, a little bit of cream and cheese curd in it. We do a uh, pan roasted tomato that's got balsamic notes and some garlic and a little bit of salt. We drizzle on the plate a reduction of balsamic as well as a spicy honey sauce and then we serve it with some fresh torn basil and some of our house baked garlic herb bread. So good. You know what I love uh, about this place is that it's like pretty chill in here mm -hmm. which is really nice. You know if you're coming to Point Rustin and you're hanging out with the fam which I've totally done. In fact uh, the first time we visited I came here after my kid like ran oh, around nice. like crazy out there. Um, but I like that there's these elevated options too. Mm -hmm. You know because mom's got to run around at the park but she also likes good food. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So amazing. So we eat up this tasty food. I might get a little thirsty. Autumn, that's where you come in. That's where I come in. So what are we doing? today we are making one of our craft cocktails. It's actually called the Monkey Jam. Okay. Uh, we make it with monkey shoulder scotch and blackberry Jaffard creme de mure. Um, it is an awesome craft cocktail if you are tiptoeing your way into the world of scotch. Okay. 
So Let's here we go. It. Let's okay. go. What do we got? What are we starting so with? So this is our monkey shoulder. Mm -hmm. This Fun is to say. Uh -huh, right? mm -hmm. This is our blackberry creme de mur. This is fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of simple syrup to make it okay, sweet. Okay. And then we're going to give it a couple of dashes of bitters. Beautiful. And we already have our ice in there. And so now we are going to shake. Do you want to shake? Do you want me to shake? <gasps> Can I shake? You can shake. Oh, shake, shake, yeah, shake. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You got to really get it. I like Good there. job. <laughs> All right. Good go. work. You got it. OK, so now we are going to take this off. And we are going to pour it in there. Beautiful. In. I like this because, you know, I, we were joking. I am a Scotch girly, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't need to tiptoe my way into anything. But sometimes you want something really, like, fresh, you know? And I feel like the blueberry or blackberry really adds yes. to that. Yes. Can That's I good. give her a go? Please do. All right. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's super fun. Well balanced. It's a little bit smoky, oh, but it's also goodness. sweet. Uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, okay. that's my favorite cocktail. So we have about a minute left. I have to hear about this fun okay. drink here. Yes, this one, we, we already poured it for mm -hmm. you because it is part of our F-bomb series. <laughs> So, okay, okay. Carly's big old mug of booze, uh -huh. and those are actually secret recipes, so I can't tell you what's in it. Oh, darn. Um, but this one is especially popular this time of year because it is owed to our Seahawks. So, oh. it's called the Big Blue, and it gets its name because we do it with a finish. <gasps> Fun! Oh, this is so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to take these upstairs so my friend Carly can try one, but I'm going to send it over to BMAC right now. Hey, man. Hi there, you guys. We are at the Elks Temple McMinimins, a fantastic McMinimins. Of course, there are tons of McMinimins everywhere across the Pacific Northwest. This one is special. This is Demetrius. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what is special about this place here to you? Well, one of the special things about this this place is we're in beautiful Tacoma, Washington. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we were able to uh, renovate this this beautiful building. Uh, it's Elks Temple. Uh huh. It was once an Elks Lodge, number 174 here in Tacoma. Uh, it outgrew its membership, so the lodges ended up going other places, and this building ended up pretty much uh, declining, going down, and sat empty for about 30 years. McMinimins came in and swept it up. Uh, you know, it's so cool because like the McMinimans around the, the uh, Pacific Northwest here, they, they take old buildings, a lot of times they're schools or something like that, and then they turn them into something fantastic. Where are we at right now? Where are we playing pool? Where are we, where are we doing shuffleboard and all that? Uh, this is Doc's Bar. Okay. Doc's Bar is uh, one of many bars we have here in Elks Temple. And you got you got arcade in here. You got you got the, the shuffleboard. You got the pool tables. Of course, you can probably order food and That's drinks right. in here as well. Yes. And uh, we were just down the hall. And we were taking a look at the secret bar. There is a secret bar. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I know it's a secret, but if you find it, tell us a little bit about it. Well, we have a secret passage here at uh -huh. Miniman's Elks Temple. Once you find that passageway. Then behind the doors, you can find our secret bar. Okay, now to go live, we have to have a cell signal. And I'm telling you, we wanted to go live from the secret bar, but even a cell signal <laughs> is tough getting out of there. So it is super secret. Very cool, though. Very little cozy place. What else do you guys have? You have a hotel here as well. You can stay here if you want, right? Absolutely. This is the destination location, <laughs> okay? We have 45 overnight guest rooms here. There are several bars, several restaurants. We have a 700-person capacity music venue in this building. Awesome. It's pretty rad. And you were telling me your favorite spot is where we're going to go to next, which is what? The old hangout. The old hangout. That's the tiki bar, That's right? right? So we got a special tiki bar that we're going to show you here coming up in, in, in just a bit as well. On top of that, just outside this window, is something special coming soon, right? That's Tell us a little right. bit about that. Yeah, Pierce Transit's got a stop here that will be opening here in a couple of weeks so you can take the train in. See, that's the way to go, right? Absolutely. Then you're not having to drive. No you parking take, worries. No parking worries. You can just take the train. 
Uh, when do you guys open typically? I know each of the bars probably open at different times, but when can people come in and start eating? Absolutely. 7 a.m. is when the bar, restaurant, pub opens. Okay. There are two pubs or one pub on property and one bar that are all ages. Uh, the rest of the bars on property are 21 and older. The bar that opens in the morning for breakfast is our main pub, and uh, at 12 o'clock, our Spanish bar opens for all ages. Fantastic. And you know what? We got, you know, let's, let's put these down here, because we, which one do you want, by the way? The, our bartenders made, made us a, a, a couple of drinks. Do you want that one? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm fine drinking that, too, but here you go. Cheers, cheers. to you. And cheers to you, uh, you guys. We're going to be back more here coming up uh, after the break. We're going to check out that tiki bar, by the way. I can't wait for that. We're going to learn how to make a fancy drink. We are Studio 13 live in Tacoma. We are so thrilled to be out here. We'll be right back after the break. Take you another mile. Don't gotta wait. Don't gotta wait. Don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around. Like sunshine and through the clouds. I'm going to make I want to see you smile, take you another mile, don't got to Hello, we are checking out gorgeous Tacoma all oh, day long. And Carly, I was sad that you couldn't be downstairs with me, so I brought the party up to you. I appreciate Cheers. that. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> my friends. So this one is the F-bomb, yeah. which typically we'd get big, in big trouble for it, What do you mean? It means friends. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Friendship. Friendship. bomb. Yes. Mm. What do you think? What do we think? I love it. Yeah. You only need one of these. I, th I feel like that's true. I feel like that's true. Now, we showed you how to make this one because uh, we were able to, but this is a secret, so you'd have to come to Ferelli's Pizza to try it. That's secret true. recipe. Secret recipe here. Oh, so fun. All right. We're actually going to check back in with Brian McMillan, who is still beep bopping around McMinimins. Hi, Brian. Yeah. Well, this place is awesome. I feel like it's, it's kind of an amazing in a good way. You know, like there's so many cool different spots. We were actually just down in the Tiki Bar. We tried to go live from the Tiki Bar. Turns out we can't. So we're going to show you another cool spot. Ooh, did you bring it? Did you bring a yes. drink? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is good. You know, the, the, one of the things I love about McMinimins? Come on over. Oh, Come on goodness. over. Yeah. And what's your name? My name is Grady. Grady? Yes. What did you make? This is the Mermaid Spit. Oh, <laughs> perfect. The, what's, what's in it? So this is going to be vodka, coconut rum, pineapple, lime, and blue carousel. Look at that, my friends. Look at that. So, you, if you can't go down to the Tiki Bar to do a live shot, the Tiki Bar comes to you. Thank there you, you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you so much. Enjoy. We're going to check out the gift yeah, shop. Okay. Come on over. I got Demetrius <laughs> here still, and uh, this is a really cool spot as well. Tell us a little bit about the gift shop. Our bottle shop. <laughs> this is where you, this is where you can get uh, some of the some our, of the big uh, Our spirits, our wine, right. our beer, canned pints. You take this is our tasting room, so you can actually come here and taste our beers. This is open seven days a week. I gotta say, I, I'm trying this. I'm trying this tiki drink right now. This is so delicious. Um, but uh, yeah, McMinimins has a lot of things. You may not know. Of course, they have their beers, but they also distill. A lot of stuff as well, too, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, we yeah. do. We just deal our, our liquor at Edgefield and Troutdale. Cool. Oregon. And not only that, you can get coffee here as well in the morning. You can, you know, order. They, they have the taps as well and all that stuff. And some wonderful classical music to ease you into buying some stuff, That's right? right. <laughs> yeah. Another great spot here to check out as you, as you uh, join. And, and also, they make some beer on site, too. We got the brewery right here. We're not going to go in there right now, but you, you can kind of peek in there and check that out as Absolutely. well, the process. Yes, yep. We make beer here on site, and we pour our beer here on site. Funnels right here through the bottle shop. You know, the fun thing about McMinimins is, is that you it's a whole experience, and you can stay on site for the entire day and be entertained throughout the entire day as well, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yes, so, All right, so we, we, uh, we, we were talked about the Tiki Bar. We talked a little bit about the Secret Bar as well. Are there any secret offerings in the Secret Bar? Um, secret offerings. I think there are. Yeah? Yes. Secret drinks, secret food maybe? Um, yeah, there's but, actually, yeah. Okay, you got to get, you got to figure it out. You got to find the secret bar. I, I heard another way to find out where the secret bar is, is you just ask people that maybe had a few beers <laughs> uh, yes. around that are walking around, right? They'll tell you. Cool. 
<laughs> um, what's nearby too? If if you want to, you know, maybe enjoy your time here, stay at the hotel. What's nearby here in Tacoma that people can enjoy? Oh man, there's many things. We're downtown Tacoma. Yep. There's axe throwing and Opera Alley. There's the Glass Museum. There are art museums. This place is pretty rad. It's pretty cool. You got the Tacoma Comedy Club That's as right. well. The Tacoma Dome is not too far away. Maybe you're hitting up a concert or something like that. This is a perfect uh, place to stay as well. So, uh, you know what? Come on down. Check this out. Thank you so much. You have been a wonderful tour guide. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. And cheers to you guys, Carly and Maria. I'm, uh, I am enjoying this, this very uh, fruity but very <laughs> delicious drink. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks, be <laughs> back. Say the name, a Mermaid Spit. I yeah, believe that's what it was like called. <laughs> I feel like our drinks match a little bit. They do, you know? yeah. And then you're like the classy, fancy friend. <laughs> sure. And not only did you bring drinks up, you also brought some food up. Yeah. Too. Do you want me to hold this for Maybe. you? This thing's it's like a hammer. Really okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, here we have some fresh burrata. Yes. So I did try this one. It was so Looks good. So I said good. I gotta take this up to Carly. Let's see if I can. <laughs> Balance the plate. Good luck, girl. Is but I'll tell you, it? yeah, you've never looked fancier. Mm. It's so good. Thank you. Do you love oh, it? That's fantastic. I'm telling wow, you, that bread is amazing. They crisp that up in house, mm. and they also crisp up, or uh, that you know, they roast the tomatoes here, mm. and there's like honey and balsamic. Oh my god! Absolutely love this. Um, yeah. I was not realizing how hungry I was before uh, we got this. So very excited here. <laughs> this has been such a fun day, just checking out Tacoma. We've mm -hmm. been here a couple times before. Right. I've loved going to like the Tacoma. The comedy club. I'm actually glad that they mentioned that yeah. in that last hit too. So many great comedians come on our show. So I'm sure you'll see some in the future that are going to be performing at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Great yes. venue. I love that. You know, our last guest there said Tacoma is just so rad, and it is. It, is. it absolutely is a wonderful place to stop by. And we want to yeah. say a big thank you to Frelly's Pizza for letting us like hang out here. Not only is it beautiful, but yeah. we also got saved from the rain. Right? We, we do did. love that. <laughs> They've got a great patio, and then if you want to come in here and be a little covered but still enjoy this gorgeous view, you can do it, it all here. Oh, Big we fan. had so much fun. Yeah, this has been the best day ever. <laughs> hey, go out there and have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Don't got to wait, don't got to wait, don't got to wait today. It's happening all around, like sunshine and through the